Hello, I'm Isom Phillips, and in this video, I want to take you through my YouTube gear journey. I started my channel about two years ago with a Nikon DSLR and went from there to a Canon M50, and now I've moved on to the Micro Four Thirds camera system. And in this video, I'll tell you why. So let's get into it. About two years ago, I started my YouTube channel, and I wanted to start out shooting with a camera. Yeah, I had a smartphone, but I decided I'd rather use a camera, and I already had a camera, a Nikon DSLR, a Nikon D7000. And that's a great camera for shooting still photographs, and that was my main experience with still photography. I didn't have much experience in video, but since this camera was video capable, I decided I could use it for YouTube videos. I quickly found out that it was not well suited for YouTube videos. First of all, it didn't have a flip out screen, so I couldn't see myself when I was shooting videos. And using a microphone with the preamp on that camera was not good. The audio was terrible. But the biggest problem I had with it was the autofocus. It was not good for video. So I decided I needed something to make the process of making videos a little bit easier. And that's when I did a little research and came upon the Canon M50. Found a used one online and used that camera to make my videos and have been using it up until recently when I switched to the Micro Four Thirds system and in particular the Panasonic G85. And in this video, I just wanna go over some of the reasons why I made that switch. First of all, I wanted a camera that gave me more 4K capability. Now, you know the Canon M50, if you're familiar with it, it has 4K, but the crop factor on the Canon M50 makes it almost useless. So I wanted a camera that gave me more 4K capability and I didn't want to spend a whole lot of money to get there. I didn't want to have to go to full frame or a higher priced APS-C camera like a Sony. So that's when I looked at the Micro Four Thirds system. Now the Panasonic G85, a Micro Four Thirds camera, gave me 4K capability and 30 and 60 frames per second and also the 1080p requirements that I wanted. Now I don't shoot in 4K a lot, but it's nice to have that capability when you want to shoot in 4K. Another reason for going to the Micro Four Thirds system is because of the weight factor. The bodies are generally lighter, the lenses are generally lighter and more compact. So if you're out hiking or you're out on location and you have to lug your camera around from day to day and sometimes all day, that can add up as a strain on you. So the lighter cameras and the lighter lenses are just easier on you overall. And the best thing about them is they are inexpensive. And I was concerned about Canon's dedication to producing more lenses for the Canon M series cameras. There just was a very limited selection. With a Micro Four Thirds camera, there's a wealth of opportunities for lenses. I mean, there's Olympus lenses, there's Panasonic lenses, and there's a bunch of third-party lenses for Micro Four Thirds cameras. So you've got plenty of choices. And best of all, you can find them at a very good price, especially when they're used. Go on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, wherever you shop for used lenses and camera gear, you can find some really good prices on Micro Four Thirds cameras and lenses. Now, if I were to get a camera like in a full frame to do what this one does, I might spend a couple of thousand dollars. This camera here, I did buy it new. It was about under $700 for the camera and the kit lens, a good kit lens. It's a Panasonic 12 to 60 millimeter lens. Another thing about the Micro Four Thirds system, especially the Panasonic, this body is weather sealed and also the lens is weather sealed. So, I mean, I live near the beach. So if I take my camera out to the beach, I don't have to worry about sand or salt air getting into the camera and possibly ruining my camera. Another great feature of the Micro Four Thirds cameras, in particular, this Panasonic G85, it has great in-body stabilization. Now this is due to the small sensor size. The small sensor size has the in-body stabilization built right around the sensor. And combine that with a stable lens, which the kit lens that came with it is a stable lens, and you have dual stabilization. Now just the other day I went out shooting with this camera and this lens with the dual stabilization, and I recorded this video just shooting handheld. This gives you an example of how good the stabilization is. The only thing I did in post was just add a little stabilization in post to help it out, just smooth it out a little bit. But mostly it's all handheld and it's amazing. It's like having a built-in gimbal on your camera. 
The lens that I'm currently using to shoot this video is a DJI 15 millimeter lens. Now I believe it's a lens made by Panasonic, but it's DJI branded because it was used in one of their drones, but it fits a micro four thirds Panasonic camera. Now I got it used on eBay at a very good price. And the thing that's great about this is with my Canon M50, I had the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 lens, and that's a great lens, but it was big and bulky. This lens is about the third the size of the Sigma, and it has the same field of view. Now it's a 1.7, it's not a 1.4, but that's not that much difference. But I'll just give you an example of how big this lens is compared to a Sigma F1.4 16 millimeter lens. If you're familiar with that lens, you know about how big they are. By making this video, I'm not trying to convince anyone to go out and buy a Micro Four Thirds camera. I'm just trying to point out the reasons why I decided to go with a Micro Four Thirds camera. It gave me all the things I was looking for at a very affordable price. Now, if you're wanting to change cameras from what you're currently using, maybe some of the things that I pointed out can help you along the way. Maybe you'll decide to go with a Micro Four Thirds camera. I don't know. Now, I don't want to get into the debate about whether a Micro Four Thirds camera is better or worse than an APS-C type camera like the Canon M50 or a full frame camera. That's a debate that goes on and on on YouTube and everywhere else among camera enthusiasts. I just know what works for me and this camera works for me and it's great to have the camera that's lightweight, it's inexpensive, and I'm able to get a variety of lenses at a very affordable price. And as far as quality, it checks all the boxes. Here are some scenes shot with the Panasonic G85 from a recent hiking trip. The only downside I've found to Micro Four Thirds cameras, and in particular the Panasonic cameras, is the autofocus. Now it's notorious for having not so great autofocus. It's nothing like the Canon M50's autofocus, the dual pixel autofocus, which is one of the best. The Panasonic autofocus, it's tricky, it's workable, but it's not as easy as the Canon M50. So if you're considering a Micro Four Thirds camera, in particular a Panasonic, you might want to take that factor into consideration. The autofocus is not the best, but you can work with it if you kind of work with it a little bit and figure out what best settings to use. Let me know in the comments below what you currently shoot with and whether or not you think you would be interested in moving on to a Micro Four Thirds camera in the future. Now, if you have any questions about the Panasonic G85 or Micro Four Thirds cameras in general, please leave them below in the comments section. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching everyone. Be safe and we will see you in the next video.